Hello. It's early May and it's time for a homestead garden tour. I'm Liz Sorab and this is By the Farm. We've been here a little over four years and I've been slowly creating a food forest, uh, an annual vegetable garden, uh, a flower garden uh, and more recently a small market garden. At various times of the year I, I allow the ducks into different parts of the garden so in the uh, autumn and winter they are allowed into the vegetable garden uh, and in the spring uh, they're allowed here in the food forest until the current bushes uh, and the raspberries start to come in, in which case I shut them out again, uh, otherwise they'd eat them and we wouldn't have any. But at the moment they're going through this area, removing all the slugs and the snails and the other bits and pieces that they can find. And they are uh, the absolutely the best pest control uh, that we have. This is the next generation of pest control. They are five weeks old now. Their feathers are just starting to come in and I seem to be losing an awful lot of my day every day just watching them. As you look down uh, the length of the vegetable garden uh, you can see there are raised beds on either side of a central path and I've numbered them uh, 1 to 10 on that side, 11 to 20 on that side and I do that so that when I'm trying to plan what's going where I know which bed I'm referring to. The first four beds uh, at this end are pretty much all perennials. Uh, so I have an asparagus bed here. Uh, we planted these crowns two years ago now and we planted two year old crowns. So we have started harvesting um, the asparagus in this bed. It is so nice to have uh, fresh asparagus. What a, an absolute treat. Uh, and in this bed are our strawberries. Well, these are half of our strawberries. Uh, these are a very early variety. I don't know their name. Um, there were some plants here when we moved in um, and I just divided them and they grew runners and I planted up the runners. So this whole bed uh, has come from about six plants that are here when we moved in. They've already got uh, small strawberries developing on them and hopefully by the end of May uh, we will be eating the first of our strawberries here. There are some other strawberries uh, over in the front orchard. That's just uh, one row of late strawberries and I think I've got a few of them uh, over at the back there as well. Uh, and I just wanted a later maturing variety so that when these are finished, the next ones will start and it just extends our season a little more. And these two beds are all mostly perennials as well. Uh, so we've got a Taunton Dean kale there, uh, some more asparagus. As you can see, the fern is just just starting to grow now. Uh, there's some Egyptian walking onions. Really like those. That's been a such a pleasure to be able to have that fresh onion taste early in the year. Those are now forming the little bulbils uh, on the top uh, of their stems, which will bend over touch the ground uh, and root to there which effectively makes them walk across the ground and uh, there are a few uh, raspberries in this bed although there shouldn't be. This is the raspberry bed uh, and anything uh, in anywhere else uh, is just a runner that's gone gone through. Uh, these are uh, autumn fruiting raspberries so I cut them right down to the ground uh, in the um, late winter and early spring which encourages them to send up lots of lovely new growth and uh, these are absolutely delicious. Uh, again I don't know what variety these are uh, because these came from my mother-in-law's house and um, when we moved here we just bought um, a huge number of raspberries with us um, and I'm really pleased that we did. And in amongst the raspberries uh, are these really pretty little white flowers. Uh, now this is a garlic chive and you uh, just eat the leaves but I find them so pretty uh, I'm prepared just to leave them and just allow them to grow into a much larger clump just because they're so attractive and they're also really good for pollinators at this time of year. It's something else uh, for the bees to visit. I'm very pleased to have them. And next to the raspberry bed um, we've got carrots. These were sown um, last year. They didn't grow very much uh, in the autumn but they are now starting uh, to give us quite a nice harvest of sort of finger-sized carrots. Um, there we go. Uh, 
they're not huge but the taste is fantastic we're really enjoying having uh, fresh carrots uh, and certainly this year I will be sowing some uh, later in the year again so that we have carrots uh, throughout the winter where they were just tiny weeny ones uh, and now uh, these you know not a terrible size baby carrots but the taste is just lovely at that end of the bed uh, there are some parsnips those are self-sown ones uh, so they're effectively volunteer parsnips i'm really happy for them to be there they've germinated they're happy to grow in those conditions so who am i to argue with them um, and they're also uh, in the pathways uh, and in the next bed as well and i'll just be allowing those to grow because well it's absolutely no work and there they are doing it for me and this is the cane structure uh, I put up a couple of weeks ago for our Greek gigantes beans they're a type of runner bean um, but you don't have them for the green pods you have them for the white uh, bean in the centre of them which is huge and it's got a slightly potatoey taste it's very creamy we really like them uh, and they have become a staple part of our winter diet as you can see there are flowers everywhere i'm really happy for these aquilegias to be here and to flower again uh, it's something else for the pollinators and they find them really pretty so there's a really dark deep color one uh, over here uh, and the pink uh, a pinky purple uh, and a pink deeper pink one here i really like them they're just a nice little splash of color uh, in the veg garden And this, uh, far from being grass, which is what it looks like, um, is garlic. This is the garlic that I grew last year and I didn't get around to harvesting it. The soil in this bed is not great. Uh, it really could do with more mulching and feeding. Um, and towards uh, midsummer last year, this became really hard uh, ground to dig into um, and I, really struggled uh, to get these out so I left them in I let the beans grow up around them I don't know what my ducks are talking about <laughs> um, and this year the garlic has uh, sent shoots back up uh, from that clove each clove that had grown and the way I'm using them now is almost um, like a garlic spring onion so I lift uh, a whole clove we just had one for lunch um, and lift the whole clove I'm using uh, all of the stem chopped up and then I'm using the leaves uh, which I'm chopping uh, and I'm either putting them in the freezer uh, for use uh, during the winter uh, or I just put them into uh, things like stir fries or omelettes the taste is nowhere near as strong as if you had a bulb uh, of garlic that you had preserved and cured because that concentrates the flavour so it's much milder which means that you can eat uh, the whole thing. I'm really pleased I did this. Um, it was an accidental experiment um, but I'm certainly going to do this on purpose again from now on. This bed uh, had parsnips in it up until yesterday, so for 2019 uh, this had alternate rows of parsnips and carrots in it. Uh, when I harvested the carrots that then left more space for the parsnips to grow uh, and I also put some celery in here as well. Uh, so that's all now being cleared out, it's had some compost pops on the top of it, just a very thin layer uh, and I've started putting salad stuff in here and on the recommendation of Serena over at uh, You Can't Eat the Grass uh, I'm trying Salanova lettuce uh, but I've also got um, a Remain uh, three colour so that's not three colours on each lettuce uh, there's a, a green lettuce a red lettuce and then a speckledy lettuce so three different types of remain lettuce in there and then there'll be more lettuce uh, and radish spring onions uh, and other uh, salad leaves in this bed this bed uh, has got broad beans in it and i'll follow the broad beans by leeks going in there and they're just at the point of uh, getting their first set of flowers and once they get to about four or five I'll nip the tops out uh, and we'll have lots of broad beans for the freezer there. 
and in this bed uh, this is the first of my brassica beds uh, you can you can tell it's a brassica bed because I've covered it uh, with netting to stop the uh, butterflies and uh, cabbage moss getting in there uh, so this netting um, is it's a scaffolding netting uh, a debris netting which I bought uh, online and when it comes uh, there are uh, seams in it uh, that have holes in them, they're reinforced holes, presumably for fixing it to the sides of buildings or to scaffolding poles. Uh, so I just use my sewing machine, I sewed a seam along there so there aren't any holes in it. Uh, I have still got some that's got the holes um, but this piece uh, is good so hopefully uh, no butterflies and moths can get in here. So I've taken it down to sides, uh, it's got some wood um, here and it's got uh, things at each end to hold it down because I want to make sure that birds can't get in there because if they get in uh, they're unlikely to find their way out again. So in here there's a bit of beetroot and some chard from last year and uh, I can see there's a couple of parsnips again those are self-sown and I've put uh, some cabbages so there's some savoy cabbage and some uh, red cabbage that's the red acre um, and there's also quite a lot of marigolds in there. Those are self-sown and I'm going to be lifting those soon and moving them over to the market garden and actually having a row uh, of marigolds uh, because I use the petals in salads. And also in here uh, is the parsley from last year. It's actually looking really healthy. Um, <laughs> they are huge, huge parsley plants. Again, this is something I harvest uh, to freeze, so I'll chop this and then you can either put it in uh, ice cube trays and just have a small amount, or if you just chop it uh, and put it on a tray to freeze it, uh, you can then crunch it up into almost individual pieces and put them into a bag. And then when you're cooking uh, at a time of year when the parsley isn't available, uh, you've got to just to grab a handful to put in your cooking. Increasingly uh, our beds are becoming mixed beds where things are self-sown in them or like this one there are potatoes in it from where I didn't harvest them completely last year. Um, but I have put up uh, this framework with some netting and I've sewn um, some mange too, those are snow peas. Um, and it's a variety called uh, Oregon Sugar Pod. And hopefully uh, those will go up there and these will give me a later crop uh, of mange too than the ones that I've got growing in the polytunnel. Uh, those have got to about a foot and a half high now so it won't be all that long before we'll be harvesting from those and then after that uh, we'll be able to harvest from these. Uh, but there's also uh, quite a few potatoes in here and these canes uh, are for some Greek gigantes beans that have been growing here for I can't remember whether it's three or four years and hopefully they'll come back this year uh, and grow up these tripods uh, and this beautiful plant um, is a borage although borage is a fairly scruffy plant I think it is absolutely worth the amount of space it takes up in a garden and what I'm thinking this year is that uh, I will allow the ones that have self-sown on the floor here to grow and I might even transplant some more uh, along here and let them grow uh, on the outside of the bed. And the reason I like them so much is that A, the bees love them. Uh, these ones have actually flowered right through winter this year. Now it has been a really mild winter, but it means on the days that the bees have ventured out of their hive, uh, they've been able to find borage uh, amongst other things uh, to be able to uh, collect the nectar from. And the other good thing is uh, the flowers are edible. And there are two things that I do with them. Uh, one is I pop them into salads. Uh, they make it look really pretty uh, and it's just uh, another colour in that salad bowl. Uh, but you can also freeze the individual flowers um, in ice. So you just fill up your ice cube tray and pop one of these into each section. And then uh, you have them to pop in your drinks. They look really attractive. This is another mixed bed. Um, there were spring onions and carrots uh, and turnips at that end and then uh, leeks. So this is my nursery bed for my leeks and some beetroot, uh, shallots, um, more shallots uh, and at this end uh, is coriander. 
and then over on this side uh, are some potatoes which I've done by um, putting a pile of homemade compost uh, in rows on the ground and planting the potatoes in it uh, and I'm slowly starting to fill up the gaps between those piles with wood chips and I'm just going to be uh, covering uh, each each row of potatoes, a bit like I have with this one, with duck bedding, grass clippings, uh, anything I can find uh, that will act as a mulch uh, as those potatoes grow through. And this bed uh, has my runner bean frame in it. So Mr J and I built this uh, to try and counteract uh, the effects of the very strong winds that we get on this site, particularly in August when the runner beans are growing up the canes and heavily laden. Uh, it makes the canes uh, very vulnerable to wind rock. So we've uh, built this frame and last year this was really successful uh, in keeping the beans uh, upright and I'm hoping uh, that will be the same this year. If you're a regular viewer uh, by the farm, you'll know uh, why the canes lean out like this. But in case you're new here, uh, I do this so that as the bean plants grow up, the beans will hang down uh, over the path so I can just gather them uh, like this without having to fight my way in uh, amongst a load of canes that are getting tighter and tighter uh, in a tripod. This works really well for us, uh, but we do have several methods of growing beans and if you haven't seen uh, my video about creating bean supports uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. There's another bed uh, of brassicas here, this has got uh, the red acre in it again, um, it's got some beetroot uh, across the far side and this morning uh, I've planted some kohlrabi in here too. I haven't eaten kohlrabi before, I've never tried it so I'm really interested to see what that's like. I hope we like it because there's about 18 plants in there. Uh, this bed uh, I had put a cover on, warmed the soil up uh, so I could plant in here. Well, this is confession time. Not everything goes right here uh, all the time. In fact, very often it goes wrong. So I had this cover over it to keep it warm and I planted some lettuces in here. Well, something uh, was munching on the lettuces. Um, all the time and I really didn't want them to disappear so I'm going to have to rethink about this bed. So not a success so far uh, this year but hopefully I can get that sorted out uh, and we'll be able to uh, grow in this. Uh, I haven't worked out yet uh, what will go in here uh, because I was going to do mixed salads in here. Not going to work uh, if everything's going to get eaten. This bed uh, has got potatoes in it um, and they are being mulched uh, with grass clippings. The potatoes aren't actually growing in the grass clippings, they're the soil uh, underneath. So I've put them on top of the soil and covered them with grass clippings. Uh, a bit like I did uh, when I created the bed uh, down in the food forest. I'm sorry, my ducks are having another meltdown about something. They make this noise uh, every time they can uh, see a cat and there's lots of them in our neighbourhood. Um, and there's also uh, a very beautiful um, broad bean growing in here. This is a plant that's uh, overwintered um, and I didn't think it would produce uh, lots of beans but there are plenty of flowers on it so I'm hopeful um, that this one plant will give us uh, some extra beans as a bit of a surprise. And these two uh, plants with the sulphur yellow flowers uh, are purple sprout in broccoli uh, that have now, uh, obviously you can see they've gone over, uh, they've gone to flower. Now I know Hugh Richards uh, will eat them when they're like this I'm not so keen on them, but uh, I do know some feathered friends who are, so they'll be going off to uh, the chickens very soon. There's another borage plant here, uh, and at the far end, uh, there's a couple of currant bushes and uh, an amelian plant. It might be confession time. These strawberry plants um, I put in here three years ago. And the year before last, I said, I really need to take these out and move them so I can put something else in the bed. Uh, I said the same thing last year. And 
I'm going to say the same thing this year. I really do need to take these out. The plants are going to be beyond their best now. Um, they are at least four years old. They are still producing, but not uh, as prolifically uh, as they might do if they were a two-year-old plant. So I'm not going to waste the strawberries. I'll let them fruit. Uh, I'll harvest that fruit. And then this is going to be the year. <laughs> Please hold me to account on this. This is going to be the year. I'm going to lift these strawberry plants, get something else in this bed. And uh, over on this side uh, is another bed uh, with potatoes in it. This has been mulched uh, with duck bedding. They're growing really well. They're a few inches high now. Oh, actually the ones on that side are seven or eight inches high. And uh, I do need to uh, cover the cover the plants um, to exclude some light and to encourage them to grow more. That will come uh, when my neighbours next mow their lawn and also uh, when I next clean out the ducks. In the bed just there which is a two-thirds length bed I've got nothing in there uh, this year that wasn't there last year so at the moment it's still got root parsley, uh, celeriac and dill in it and we're still harvesting those. Uh, the dill will stay in for another year, the root parsley and celeriac will come out uh, and something else will go in there. As yet I still haven't worked out what. I think I might uh, really boost the soil in there with lots and lots of uh, homemade compost and possibly put some courgettes in it. And then this bed, um, which is not a brassica bed, this netting is here just to protect the young seedlings in here. Uh, this has got parsnips in it. Um, it's been a mixed bag of success. Um, parsnips in theory need pretty fresh uh, seed to germinate at their best. There are three different lots of seed in here. There's almost a no parsnips growing at this end. Uh, we've got a few in the middle uh, and just a few at this end as well. Now normally uh, I would go, <gasps> I haven't got any parsnips or I haven't got enough, panic, panic. But I do know that we've got them uh, in the other beds where they've self-sown and they've started growing quite happily. So we will have whatever's growing in here uh, and in a month or so's time I'll take this cover off and wherever we haven't got parsnips uh, I'll then either grow some more root parsley uh, or some carrots. And here, this spiky chap here uh, is um, a globe artichoke and it's just about to start uh, bearing its fruit. Are they fruit? They're flower heads. Um, and you eat the immature uh, flower head, the bud, and uh, they're very definitely almost ready. Mr. J is not very keen on these, uh, so I get to eat these uh, to myself. Is that very greedy? Yes. Am I going to apologise for that? No. <laughs> And back here uh, is another fairly enormous raspberry patch. Um, this started out as uh, just two rows of raspberries uh, put in <laughs> when we first moved in. And they have spread uh, quite spectacularly. Uh, here's one that I haven't cut back to the ground and it's flowering. So it won't be long uh, before that offers us uh, a little bit of fruit. And there's a couple of uh, currant bushes there. And I wanted this to be uh, a really lovely uh, fruit patch. Um, well, it hasn't quite worked out like that. One of the things about it being at the far end of the garden is each day I come out and I kind of start work at that end, work my way this way. Well. I usually run out of time uh, or energy or enthusiasm and then this end doesn't get done and that's always a risk when you've got quite a large space that something ends up getting neglected and unfortunately basically that corner has been neglected. Uh, so I do cut the raspberries back uh, but hiding away in here um, is another a currant bush and I can see uh, over there 
uh, a wild, uh, one of these wild damsons or wild plums is growing. Um, and in here, uh, somewhere, there is a gooseberry bush deep down there. These are golden raspberries and they are just being smothered by this huge mound uh, of blackberry brambles that have come in from the neighbouring field. So uh, even if I cut all of these back, um, <laughs> the, the bulk of them, the main stems are uh, just on the other side of the hedge, uh, belongs to the farmer, um, and so there is a limited amount that I can do. All I can do uh, is damage control, um, which I do need to do. Uh, Mr J and I cut a pathway uh, through here earlier in the year, uh, so I can almost get to the hedge, uh, but I think you can see with me disappearing uh, in amongst the brambles, uh, what a task we've got ahead of us. I was planning uh, to have some volunteers working with me here this year, and they could have been working on the veg garden uh, or the flower garden uh, while Mr J and I uh, tackled some of that. But because of the current situation, obviously, uh, we're not having any volunteers here at the moment. When we put the polytunnel in uh, this time last year, I ummed and ahed about whether I should move this tree uh, or not. And my decision was, yes, I should move it because the chances were the wind would blow the branches and damage the polytunnel. And then uh, I decided that actually I would leave it here uh, at least for a couple of years. And I'm so pleased I did. It's the first year it's flowered. How beautiful is this? Uh, so this is a rowan um, and this will produce berries, uh, which the birds are going to love. It's delightful. It's so pretty. I I'm really pleased. The flower gardens uh, are looking really lovely, uh, but I think they deserve a tour all on their own. Uh, so I'll talk to you about those another time. Uh, and But over here is the market garden. So this is the newest part of the garden and it's still very much in development stage. But I have managed to get in uh, onions and shallots and carrots um, on this side. Uh, lots of brassicas over here. Uh, I've set up supports for beans uh, over there and there will be more salads and brassicas beyond that. And I'm just starting uh, to develop the area over on that side. And hopefully by the end of this growing season, this whole area will be productive and providing us with an abundance of food. You can find a complete list uh, of all the plants and varieties uh, that we grew here last year on our website bythefarm.com and if you'd like the updated list uh, with all the varieties that were growing in 2020 uh, you can get that by signing up to our newsletter. I'll leave a link uh, in the video description for you to do that and once you've signed up we'll send you that list. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.